Hi, so today we're going to be looking at the Milwaukee Circular Saw. I purchased this off eBay, spares a repair. The seller said it uh, wasn't working, so we shall pop the battery in. And we'll see what it does. Right. Now one thing I have noticed, the, uh, the small LED lights up. When you press the... Uh, the safety button that the safety interlock on the trigger so obviously the switch in there is working but apart from that it isn't doing anything so we shall take it apart and see if we can repair it right so I'm going to remove this handle first which is a T25 Now I'll remove the screws on the outside here. Actually there's one there which I think is a T25 as well. So I'll remove that. Now I think the rest of them are T15s are on the outside. Right, so what have we here? That looks like the control board, which is built into the um, the battery connector there. Ribbon cable going up to the uh, the DC brushless motor. That's the safety interlock switch, and that's obviously the main power switch here. So I think first thing, I'll just check. That this switch is actually working. I've got a, a diode there by the look of it. We'll just check the diode's working as well. Yeah, the diode's working. And I'll see if I can hold these two wires on. While pressing the switch, yep. So that part of the switch is working. We'll just try the other part of the switch, which is the two thinner wires here. Right. So when all the switch is working, when all the interlocks working. So I suspect the problem's going to be in here. And now we need to see how we take this part off. So I'll remove the trigger. A little connector there, I guess that must be for the LED. Another wire that seems to disappear through there. Could just be a ground or an earth or something. Uh, looks like we've got four screws down there, and then I think we can take the rest of this case off. So I think that might be a T10. Right, so that's all the casing removed. So it looks like the motor's actually held on with the four screws around the outside there. So that's um, that black wire just goes to the uh, just a screw on the case there. It must be like an earth or a earth or something. 
Right, let's see if this motor comes out now. Alright, so I'll try shaking these screws out and we'll see if they're... Does come out in one go. It must have just been sticking a bit. Nice. Get that bit out of the way. And get this bit out of the way. And we'll see what's going on with this. And it looks like we might have a couple of failed MOSFETs in this. No surprise there. Let's get a little scraping tool here, we'll just uh, get rid of some of this conformal cone. I don't know if that's a crack or whether it looks, looks like it could be a crack. Was it just a scratch? Looks like there's something maybe on that one as well. Well, I think we'll get the test meter on and we'll just see what's uh, we'll see what the measure. Because so there could be they could be that shorted or they could be blown open circuits so let's have a look right well that doesn't appear right And that one's shorted. It appears that one's shorted. I'm not getting any reading on that one at the moment, but that might just be the cotton. Okay. We've got a short here, but that could be through one of the other ones. It's hard to tell without removing them. So. Right, so that definitely. I think that one's a crack. I'm not sure if that one's a crack, but if if that one's cracked, it means that one will be blown as well, more than likely. And if that one's cracked, it means that one. Because they normally work in pairs. Like one will switch negative and one will switch positive to these, this terminal on the motor. And at the same time, either this one will switch, let's say if that one switches negative, that one will switch positive. So it energises this coil of the motor. If it wants to go, let's say, clockwise. And then the same, that one will switch negative, that one will switch positive. And then that's why there's two of them. One switches the positive side and one switches the negative side, you see. Looks like there's a bit of a, a trace here as uh, heated up. So I put a bit of solar on that just to strengthen that up a bit and then put a bit um, a bit PCB mask on it. 
All right then. Now I think we're going to bring some hot air in and use the big iron. Top one off. Right, let's we'll see if the shorts are still there. So there's still a short on that one, so that one's gone. Let's see if any of the shorts have disappeared. Right, I think we'll take this one off next. I think there might be four MOSFETs blown on this. So there's still another short. Seems to be this fella. So we'll take that one off and then see where we're at. I thought it was actually that one at first, but it seems to be that one. If you measure the uh, the gate pins on them, once I untangle me meet up probes here. The gate pins are the very le left hand pin here, the one and it's by itself. So if you measure between the gate and that pin, that seems okay. If we measure between the gate, this gate here, and that pin, that seems okay. If we measure between the gate and that pin, that seems short, so that one might be faulty as well. We'll try between the gate and that pin. Right then, we're actually just replacing all the MOSFETs on this at this rate. <clears throat> Take this one off first and we'll see what happens then. So I've got a short on that one. And short's gone on here. And the short's gone on here. So it looks like there's four lone MOSFETs on this. Alright, let's get to work on the next one before uh, this cools down a bit too much. Maybe easier if I scrape this uh, coating off that they've got and they've got like a conformal coating, it's a bit like a silicon type stuff which uh, may be hindering things a little bit. Nice. 
some flux. Get some hot air on it as well. And that one came off quite easy. I thought I think I would be expecting, but there we go. Right, so looks like we need to replace four MOSFETs on this. So what I'll do, I'll just give all this a bit of a clean up now, and then uh, we'll get some new ones on. Seems to be that one secure. And I'll do the same on number two. Touch up the smaller pins with the, uh, the small iron. Side ones, and up. Right, um, that one there now. It doesn't matter if those two are actually touching together because these one, two, three, four, five pins are actually all linked together in any way inside the actual eye inside the actual MOSFET. It's only actually the first pin here on the left hand side, which is the gate pin that actually needs to be separate. But I'll try and tidy it up just to make it a bit neater. I shall check for shorts. And some tangle me with our leads. Okay. 
clock socket. That looks okay. That looks okay. And that looks okay. Right, so I'm just going to check that I haven't shorted any of the gate pins out. That's alright, no short there, even though I've got a slight reading, but that's fine. I wonder if we get the same reading on these. Nope. I do on that one. But not on that one. I think some I think it's like each other one you get the reading on, but as long as the gate's on shorter, that's fine. Right. So I'll just tidy up my bench a little bit and then uh we'll start reassembling it. Right, just before I put it back together, I want to put it this uh, PCB mask. I'm just on that bit there. Just to neaten it up a little bit. I'll just give it a little bit of a hot air just to dry it off. Do for that. Right, so we had a black wire that went to. Yeah, wasn't it? Now, which way did this motor case and go? So that must have went like that. Right, I've got the spindle to go in first. Let's just, uh, is that just grease or metal filings on there? It's just grease. Well, the gears will go okay. Right, it's stiff because it's bearing that sort of slots into the hole there. Right, so yeah, uh, I'll see if I can slide this on. I just went around about there somewhere. for the case and that must be the bottom half of the case it screws I thought I put the four ones that came out of the motor separate but I guess not I just wasn't sure whether the uh, outer case and went on first but no that's alright to the side and I've got this black wire that went under here I think I'm going to screw this together first before I put the rest of the screws in Yeah, the 
there's something wrong with that screw hole. That's not tightening up. And that one is. that way right I think the wires must have went that way yeah right so those ones went like that Right, I just forgot to put the uh, the interlock back in. Right, now I'll put the case on. Right, so it's all that together. We just need to give it a test now. Right then, unfortunately after testing it, it still didn't work. Now, I've done a bit more work on it. Um, I found there was two diodes had gone. Uh, there's two small diodes here. So I've replaced those and it still didn't bring it to life. I've then taken the uh this one was just covered in a sort of a silicon potten compound which came off actually quite easily i've even had this circuit desoldered the circuit board and had that circuit board out as well now unfortunately this i see here which is a drv 91670 uh you can't actually buy those it's a uh, custom part from uh, Texas Instruments and you can't easily get those if you can get them at all also there um, it's got a microcontroller built in which is will have a custom firmware in there so unfortunately I think we're gonna have to deem this one a no fix uh, if anybody else has one of these it could just be that the uh, the MOSFETs have gone, but unfortunately it looks like because there was four of them gone, some of the voltage is back fed down the ribbon cable and ended up frying the IC. So, as I said, unfortunately a, a no fix on this one. Well, I think that's all we can say for this one. So, if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always... Have a great day. Thanks for watching.